the Unique Melody MEST-MK2. This is the Indigo version and has two additional EST drivers. So it's got four ESTs as opposed to the original MEST and the uh, Mark II, which has two EST drivers. So one dynamic driver, four balanced armatures, four ESTs in this set, and the dual bone conduction uh, system. It is a beautiful looking set. It has, uh, these are just absolutely stunning. You can take the filter off, just the very tip of this will come off. So if you want to change it because you want to get slightly different tuning or it's just dirty, you can do that. That's an option that they didn't have previously. The cable on this is nuts. Let me go ahead and put this down for a second. This is the 4.4 termination that comes with it. Oh, very nice. I like it a lot. Cable is nice. Y split is boss as well. Just big fat copper chunks. UM copper M3. Ultimate sound. Yeah, very nice. A chin slider that actually is quite stiff, which is cool because it's supposed to be. Get back to this real quick. Sound profile of this in the low end sounds pretty similar to the original MEST Mark II. It's got that line that's very much like the Elysian X, which is very steady from the sub bass across the mid bass and into the mids. Gives authenticity to four string bass guitars drums male vocals does that very well uh the mid lift like the mess series is slightly different but there's a bone conduction driver that is actually doing something in this because it allows for that perception because it doesn't have a natural gain that's usual however it presents vocals in a way that's actually very very appealing this has slightly less energy around 6k i think that's where the difference is and also the overall quality of the treble seems to be slightly improved due to the extra 2ST. Very nice set. Full review is coming. Okay, this is a video for the Unique Melody MEST Mark II Indigo. This is an updated version of the very popular MEST and the MEST Mark II. They've included an additional two EST drivers into this set. You should have just seen a brief two minute synopsis of what I think about the set. Is this a better set than the MEST Mark II? Yes, it is. Is this a hype job? There's only 200 sets being made, so that's not really possible. They'll probably be gone sooner than later, so there's really no point in doing stuff like that. But I was sent one, thank you very much, to Unique Melody, and I'm going to give my opinion. Like I did with the Fusang, which I was not a fan of and a lot of people disagreed with me, it's about the musical library, and it's about how I want my music replayed, and I want a dynamic driver if I can, and I can because there's lots of options. Taking care of low frequency drums, bass guitar, uh, parts of male vocals, I find that to be more authentic when I have a dynamic driver in the low end. A lot of my favorite sets have that. One exception to that is the bird, which is sitting right there. There's always exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, I think a dynamic driver is really what I'm looking for when it comes to the replay of that part of the frequency response of my library. My personal preference, so that's how I evaluate stuff. The Fusang was very expensive. I didn't understand why. It doesn't match my library. This set, on the other hand, very much matches my library. Let's take a look at it. It's absolutely stunning. I thought it was going to be a little too gaudy when I saw the pictures just before I received it, but this is beautiful. That's really nice. The cable is boss. It's right sitting right there going into adapter. It looks very cool. I probably would have designed something just like this. The You notice that the nozzle can be removed so that if this screen gets impacted, with ear material or you wanted to try a different screen to try to change the tuning slightly I wouldn't but you would have that option whereas you didn't have that option prior so that's a nice addition so that's the looks of it 4 EST is what this set contains what that the mark 2 does not the the bird has 4 ESTs the Elysian X has four ESTs. When something is done well in the treble, using four ESTs, it seems to have the most lifelike replay that I'm finding when it comes to top of the line sets. So in the future, when I'm looking for stuff, if I see a dynamic driver in the low end and four ESTs in the treble, I'm very close to being satisfied. Of course, the tuning, let's take a look at the tuning, has got to be what I want or close to it. I don't want the same thing again and again, but I'd like a tuning reasonably close to what I know 
I like unless I'm feeling wild but I don't do that with thousands of dollars this is the indigo you can see it's got a long trajectory going down into the mid base and then it corrects itself in the mids and it's got an unusual mid to upper mid transition but this is let's go ahead and pull up the mess mark too that everybody knows lay it over this area right here from about 1.5 K to about 3 K they're virtually identical as is everything prior to it there's not much difference that can't be attributed to a measurement rig and unit variation is sometimes bigger than this when we get to 3 K the new version starts to slightly tone it down between 3k and about 6.5k is slightly toned down and they've added two drivers to the mix so they've added the amount of physical drivers and they've decreased the output of the combined four ESTs to this listener's ear I find it to be more appealing I think it's a absolutely uh, amazing set and I'm just questioning why it's only 200 unit so I made quick notes to continue one DD has always been essential or I've realized that in the past couple of years for EST as of listening to this set and looking at the bird and also the X I really think that four ESTs in the treble is another bookend like I'd like a DD and I'd like four ESTs if I can do that and then in the middle and also take a look at the tuning that's something not nuts crazy V or something like that um, and I think that the treble is obviously improved over the MEST Mark II, which was one of the better ones that's on the market anyway. So they took one of the best, in my opinion, and made it even better. Let's go ahead and shut this down and I'll get started with the bass. Okay, the bass. And for context, and you can freeze this on your screen if you'd like, this is what I always listen to in addition to other stuff, but I always touch on these things. In the bass, Big Boy Kill Jill, the bass drop. You can see the timestamp, Black Sabbath, Sweet Leaf, drums and bassist. Fleetwood Mac, the chain, the bass solo at 303. Led Zeppelin, when the levee breaks, a very produced kick drum that's at the intro. Marvin Gaye, Sexual Healing, it's an 808 Roland at the intro. Massive Attack, Angel, Deck Mix, Low Frequency, again, an intro. It's before my brain starts getting grabbed by a bunch of different things at the same time. It's very easy to focus on things that start with the beginning of a song. Pink Floyd, one of these days, dueling bass guitars really throughout the track. Gilmore and Waters are both playing uh, bass guitars in this track. Violent Femmes, Please Do Not Go, a bass guitar. 20 second bass guitar, solo, kind of semi soul between timestamp 219 and 239. These are things that I was listening to. I found all of these, as I mentioned, just on this list to be uh, quite appealing on the MEST Mark II Indigo. It's very much identical to the Mark II, and I found it to be the same. So I did not expect any difference here. It's ideal replay. Just a quick look at the music. Big Boy Kill Jill. This is a deck mix drop, and it's got a bassist, bass guitar mixed in after that. Um, this plays it really well. This is an excellent set for people's library, similar to mine, which means that you might have Big Boy, and you might have uh, Outcast, and you might have Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and you might have Led Zeppelin and Grateful Dead, uh, Jim Croce, some old Robert Palmer, music like that. Uh, this set plays quite well. So this drop was significant as it's supposed to be. It didn't impact the vocals. The intro with Hatsune Miku sounded uh, quite appealing. I liked it. I thought I was immediately kind of taken by this because of the way that Hatsune Miku, which is a computer-generated Vocaloid female voice made on a computer. It's more often than not a slightly rough get-through to get to the bass hits. I found it almost perfect on this. And this is measured at 77 dB output by a file that's 440 hertz and this is actually I should mention a little bit easier to drive than the original mess mark II, which wasn't hard but this seems slightly easier to me I can give exact numbers later another track is Black Sabbath Masters of Reality and this is Sweet Leaf the first track and this is from about 2 minute 30 second 236 forward uh, bassist and a drummer going along at the same time so they're both low frequency instruments occupying the same part of the frequency response graph at about the same time they kind of overlap um, in an ideal world, you can pick up the bass pulls and releases really clearly a la something like a, like a timeless, like a planar. That's where that really excels, if not giving sometimes an unnatural um, 
overtone to the whole replay, but the, the accuracy and the precision of something like Timeless is exceptional. Dynamic drivers don't quite get there, but they can get very close. I thought that the replay of this, it didn't get too busy. It didn't feel slow, sluggish. It didn't feel like a low quality replay. I thought it sounded good, like its brother, the Mark II. It did this very well. I uh, enjoyed it a lot. I really, really liked Ozzy's vocals in this. I also liked Neil Young, um, Old Man. I, some of the hard to do vocals, Jim Croce, you know, because of his, the tonality of his voice, also sitting on a stool, mouth is close to the microphone. There's some voices that can just get on you after a while. If you're a fan of Neil Young, you know what I'm talking about. It's hard to find. The Susvara does Neil Young quite well. Some really great gear does it. A lot does not. I thought that it did this good and Ozzy did not step out and give me any um, weird feels like this was going to be a problem listening to one more for the low end and this would be Sultans of Swing and I checked this because some people have criticized said it doesn't work that way it does actually if mid bass is elevated too much the impact on the male voice is going to give a kind of a husk to it it's going to sound in a way that's slightly abnormal and you're going to know it you'll know the tuning of a set if you got good ears and lots of experience and in its mid bass region based on male vocals i'm quite attuned to that this track sultan's a swing will do that and it will also give you kind of an idea of the sub bass mid bass elevation because of the way that it presents the basses to you if the bassist and mark knopfler sound like they're very close and kind of mm, put together is the best way to describe it you see them on a virtual stage there should be some kind of separation i can hear the bassist and he's pinning down the track i can hear mark knopfler the iconic guitar and the vocals that he's doing on that very famous track sometimes with too much mid bass they seem to be slightly not squished together but they're closer than I would like ideally like the mess mark too this set does it perfect so the graph reflects what I'm listening to and that is that there's no real difference in the low end and it doesn't sound like there's a different driver in there either they're both good they both handle these things in the same way which is to say it's quite appealing so I think that the low frequency the bass and the mid bass is done quite well and that's the bass Okay, mid frequency. Let's refer again to that list. In the mids, Van Halen ain't talking about love. Guitar and vocal, especially from about 26 seconds. U2 seconds, mixed effects. I've gotten into that prior. Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. A tired of living, it's easy to do. I won't get into it. New Kid in Town by Eagles, Grateful Dead, Ripple, Steely Dan, Hey 19, Soundgarden, Spoon Man. I'm really going for the spoons here. Timestamp at 308 to 328. Roger Lee Roy Wenzel, shout out to him. Um, Robert Palmer, Sneaking Sally Through the Alley, vocal lead and backing vocals on this. Neil Young, there's also harmonic in that. Uh, Needle in the Damage Done, Led Zeppelin, Fool in the Rain, the Purdy Shuffle, Bonham, and then the very unique distortion that Page is using at 351 to 453. Meatloaf, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, male and female vocals, and also piano. It's really like a Broadway production. Lots of talk singing and basically kind of yelling on stage. It's, it, it covers the whole um, vocal output of two people with exceptional vocal range. Jim Croce, Operator. These are things that I'm always listening to. I thought that this set did... This is where the preview of this being probably one of the better sets I've got, period, is the way that it handled stuff like this. The vocals on this were fantastic in the way that if you have the Mark II in its custom form or its regular form, you know that it feels like it's going to be maybe fatiguing, but it doesn't ever quite get you to fatigue. Or it doesn't to me, particularly in the CIM version. This is where this set really steps out differently from the original. Let me go back to the graph for a second. What impact does taking 3K to about 6.5K and taking that down by about 1.5 to 2 dB? It's essentially the same profile, but you're pulling that down just a little bit. What's the impact that that has? For my library, it's the harmonics of vocals. It's distortion pedals on electric guitars and actually acoustic guitars it impacts as well. And uh, harmonic extensions of percussions also are affected by this tuning. That slight reduction is actually giving me the same sense of this is quite intense, but I'm not feeling like it's something that's going to fatigue me, and it actually doesn't. The Unique Melody MST Mark II doesn't as well, but this is a little bit... It keeps the sense of space and the immersiveness and the almost... 
I hate to say 3D, but I just said it. Like you're kind of amongst the musicians. This is doing the same thing as the original, but with the two extra two EST drivers, it's giving me a, a sounds like a higher quality. Uh, here's an interesting thing. Guitar acoustical strumming with a pick is something that was noticeably different between this and the original Mass Mark II. Listening to Badfinger day after day, are you guys familiar with that? Badfinger is a famous group that got just epically screwed and were poor, even though they were making lots of money for their manager. This right here, Badfinger Timeless, the musical legacy. Listen to Day After Day, which was the first track. There's a guitar strumming with a pick that was... I listened to the... This is, ti this is corrected to 77 dB. Listen to the MEST Mark II, and I thought, I love that. That sounds awesome. Listen to the Indigo, and I thought, holy, that's like being right next to the guitarist as he's playing. There was a subtle but obvious difference in this to me. I sometimes don't use Badfinger because I don't know how many of my viewers actually are familiar with this. If you ever saw Breaking Bad, the final episode had um, Baby Blue, the US single mix. The ver There's two different versions. That was the last song at the end of Breaking Bad, probably because his high quality meth was blue, so they used this. But it introduced a lot of people to this group and the tragedy of it and the 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 pick on the strings and the strumming is just absolutely fantastic i thought it did it excellent there's uh, repeated the glockenspiel on uh bruce springsteen which should be around here blind faith bruce springsteen the glockenspiel has a lot of energy it's hitting way up in the register high register and born to run Dun, 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 dun. This is a fucking epic album. The Glockenspiel, and I'm going to throw the treble in here and not break this into another thing. I'll just do this right in here. There's a significant cymbal strike in Blind Faith at 27 seconds and also at 38 seconds. Well, the 38 second is a Ginger Baker really hammering on a cymbal. It's, a, it's supposed to be loud like Bonham's kick drum, but it is really close to like almost too much at my listening level. Th this nailed that. I had to go back because I thought, is that the right hit? And went back and listened to it again. Yeah, that did that just like, again, being in the room. I think the thing that I said when I did my first messed video was that it was the closest experience that I'd had with in-ear gear where it felt like I didn't have in-ear gear in my ear. That sounded weird. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in a room with really good musicians. That's what the Susvara does for me, to put it simply. It's open back. I get spatial cues because I can hear the dog barking on my left side. I can hear a car drive by on the right side. Just like if I were at a concert, I can hear ambient other sounds, but I can hear high quality replay. The Susvara does that for me in headphone. It's, a, it's an open back. The mess does that in IEM form. It's really a natural, sometimes intense, but very accurate replay. I find it to be amazing. Okay, the treble, which is kind of the special sauce in this set compared to the original MEST Mark II, it is an improvement. Go ahead and take a look at this again. In particular, Aerosmith, no more, no more cymbal and vocal cymbal strikes at 7 and 13 seconds and then on and on. Big Boy Kill Jill, the Vocaloid, Hatsune Miku, computer generated voice, quite intense. Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run, Glockenspiel from a minute 15 seconds, as I've mentioned before. Boston Foreplay, it's been such a long time. The synthesizer, electric guitar, Tom Schultz doing all kinds of crazy stuff with the electric guitar uh, and keyboards and everything. They go nuts. Elton John, Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, Funeral for a Friend is the instrumental at the beginning, listening to keyboards, vocals, synthesizers, Led Zeppelin, Hey Hey, What Can I Do, Symbols. 7, 13, 16, 28, 37, 41, and on and on. Little Feet, Dixie Chicken, Horns and Piano from 4 minute 4 seconds. The Horns Piano live recording waiting for Columbus to end is amazing piano replay. Um, Rat, You're in Love, 80s electric guitar, like iconic actually for me. Guitar, cymbal, drum player, great solo. Um, minute 43 to 208. Let's go ahead and take a look at the music. One of the original things that I used to cite in the older videos was the cymbal strikes on Aerosmith's Toys in the Attic track called No More No More uh, because they're, they're good, they're clear. I have since kind of moved on to Hey Hey What Can I Do by Led Zeppelin off of Coda because they seem to be, they're just of better quality, the master, and there's more of them. Um, 
so I, I go between the two. This sounded great, as did Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? I thought the cymbal strike sounded fantastic, and I noted that when I was listening to Blind Faith Can't Find My Way Home, Ginger Baker has two significant strikes. He has many, but one that's written on that board and always has been is 27 seconds, and 38 is a bigger, more significant strike. That was perfectly done, as good as I've heard on any of the gear that I've had. That kind of really pulled me in, and that's when I started to get a little bit of OCD between the two Mark II and the Mark II Indigo and thought, there is a difference. Those two extra EST drivers are doing something. I'm absolutely convinced of it, and I prefer the Indigo over the Mark II. You're not slumming if you've got the Mark II. I just give it an honest opinion. Like I said, um, the flagship Fusang is not something I like. There's a lot of other stuff that are very expensive that I'm not fans of, but for my library, this set right here does really, really well. Another track is Boston, which is actually the... Hatsune Miku, as I mentioned before, Vocaloid, kind of intense, can be rough, but didn't have any problems with it. Cymbal Strike in Can't Find My Way Home was excellent. Boston, the foreplay long time, foreplay being the instrumental, long time being the actual song, like um, Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding. Funeral for a Friend is basically an instrumental that goes into Love Lies Bleeding, which is an actual track. It's kind of the same thing that Boston did here with track five off of their self-titled album in 1976. Um, gets all of the micro details. This is where the mast and its bone conduction driver really shines because the frequency graph on any other traditional dynamic driver BA set with would, would, would that lack of gain and other tuning would not probably work out for me ideally, but this set does. It's why I'm convinced that the, the lower tuning of the gain region of the mast original and the Mark II and this set. Many people like the first one or they like the second one. I think a lot of people like this one. It's an atypical tuning when it comes to that region, but it doesn't sound atypical. It sounds very impressive and very different from other sets that would be doing the same thing. So while I was unable to hear the beauty of the bone conduction in another company's set because of the way that they tuned already elevated and bass and treble, I w I'm able to pick it up with the MEST Mark II. So th th this sounded fantastic. The glockenspiel in Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run sounded really good. Um, Dixie Chicken, Little Feet. Let's see if I can get to Little Feet. C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, L. Little Feet. Kendrick Lamar, Little Feet. Oh, love that album. My mother had this album too. Waiting for Columbus. Oh no, I wanna I wanna look at your album in large size. There we go. That's a cool album. Um This is like a southern rock band with all kinds of players on the stage. It's I think they had um God, what was her name? Bonnie Riot or Reba McIntyre not Reba McIntyre. Does it say it on it? Did they credit her right here? No. Um, if you be my Dixie chicken, I'll be your Tennessee wine. We we'll walk together on that big city line. All kinds. Of, there's horns. There's piano. Um, there's a guitar with a distortion pedals. There's a lot of busyness going on in the range that can become fatiguing for people where live stuff is great, but it's like a concert, a, an hour of that, and you're done. I could listen to this set for longer because I actually did yesterday and thought that something like this sounded fantastic. Something like live shows, this is a good example. Dixie Chicken from the Waiting for Columbus LP by Little Feet is something that where you can really enjoy the the uniqueness, of, no pun intended, unique melody, that this set provides. This is doing it like its brother, the Mark II, but doing it in a better way in my opinion it's a better set why 200 sets I don't understand that's the trouble it does everything good upper harmonics for vocals sound good cymbal strikes sound as good as I've heard them guitar solo sound intense like they're supposed to they have sharp edges not unnaturally so and not in a way that fatigues me the Mark II gets close but it never actually did but it made me feel like I would this set doesn't do that it's an improvement on the Mark II and that's the trouble and it's really good I'm out I might do a straight up compare video with the MEST Mark II. This is a very impressive set and it, I'm a, the biggest question that I have is why it's limited to 200 units. 
there's a lot of stuff out there that's more expensive than what they're asking for this and I don't think that that other stuff is as good as this so is I'm not sure is it the materials that are hard to source is it are they testing to see if people pay this much money they already got the Fusang for a lot more money I think you're gonna sell more than 200 of these with n not that big of a problem these are really good for people that like the mess mark too and thought oh I think that's a little bit too intense sometimes Mm, this one's for you. If you thought that you wanted a little bit more authentic detail up in the treble because your Traili was giving you this sense of just naturalness that you just couldn't seem to get from sets that have only two ESTs, which is really something that, again, the EX by Elysian and the Bird, they do that for me. I've said up many times that the bird has got a thing to it that's just absolutely amazing. And the X shares that different type of tuning but being done by the same mm, physical gear. This set does that using that same backup. It's got four ESTs in it. I think that that's kind of critical. And like I said, to summarize this video, this is a step up from the Mark II. It is limited. I would recommend grabbing it if you have a library that's similar to mine or you have taken recs previously and you thought that they were good recs. I think that this is worth it. The cable is bonkers. I think a dynamic drive in the low end for my library is very much uh, ideal. I'd really like to have that and I if I spend a lot of money I'm going to. On the other end it is now developed that four ESTs taking care of the upper mid treble region is apparently my personal preference and I will from this point forward be looking for those two things on either end with some creativity in the middle and I will take different tunings because I want to enjoy different things but I do have a comfort zone and I'm not going to waste money on stuff that I look at a graph and I think that's going to be too shouty I will pass on that give me a dynamic driver put four ASTs in the end I'm probably going to hunt it down and buy it myself and do a review because I'm quite intrigued it's my thing Unique Melody MEST Mark II Indigo. You guys did a really good job. Very, very nice. Very impressive. And that's it. I'm out.